Yes, we need to support our watershed. Um, the lake is an important asset in Lincoln City and um, drinking water also. We need to have our watershed protected so that we will have water in the future to drink. And your last question, the Lincoln City City Council has spent the past several months reviewing and adopting regulations for VRDs. There has been some public resistance and opposition of the Council's efforts to balance the need for VRDs. What is your position uh, on the question of VRDs and what is that? Okay. VRDs are an important economic element of the city's economy. We need to have VRDs available to, for tourists. We also need to protect the neighborhoods. And um, if the current VRD ordinances are enforced, we would lose a lot of our VRDs because they wouldn't be able to operate in the manner that they have been operating. Um, we have a new zoning um, designation that's up for consideration. And I think that if it's, if the VR zone is placed in the appropriate areas, it could really help the um, problems with VRDs. And finally, Susan, your summation for your candidacy for City Council Ward 1. Okay. Um, as I've said, I um, have a unique position in that I have been a city employee. I have been a member of the Lincoln City Chamber of Commerce, been the secretary treasurer of, of the chamber board for three years now. Um, I also worked in the Clapham, Clatsop County Planning Department, so I have some knowledge of zoning issues. Um, I have been a legal secretary in Oregon for 30 years. I am familiar with legalese. Um, I'm also the treasurer of a local nonprofit, Business for Excellence in Youth. I've served on that board for six years. Um, I'm a supporter of small business. My husband owns a small business here in Lincoln City. And I'm a graduate of the Oregon Coast Community College Small Business Management Program. I also am a graduate of the Ford Institute Leadership Program, which um, is a program that really teaches consensus building. Um, the last thing I wanted to say that I have been elected before. I um, was on the ballot for the local school committee. And the day I was to take um, <laughs> my position, the legislature um, eliminated local school boards. <laughs> so this time, I would like to be elected and to fill my position and serve my term on the Lincoln City City Council. Thank you, Susan. Susan Walker. Thank you, City Council. Ward 1. Ward 2 has two candidates as well. And the first speaker this afternoon will be Jim Davis. Uh, again, City Council, Ward 2, Mr. Jim Davis. <laughs> as Jim comes down, if you have questions that you would like handed in, please see Nani. Good day, sir. Well, I'm running for Ward 2, City Council, and I'm really excited about being on this council, mainly because it's going to be a brand new council, a new everything we got coming this year, and uh, it's fair to get my cheat cards out. <laughs> One of the main reasons that I want to get in there is to help the local business people, not only to improve their businesses, but also to help beautify their businesses. Over the last few years, our city, in an effort to try to beautify this town, has made so many ordinances, it's actually became a negative now. We kind of shot ourselves in the foot. Uh, I'm a contractor. I'm a designer. Uh, we've had an incident last year where 
One of my clients wanted to do a $70,000 renovation to his business, but because of the city ordinances, he had to spend another 50,000 to satisfy the city. So nothing was done. So we have the same old looking building that's been there for 20 years or more. And that's one of the places I wanna work at heavily. Uh, the second one that I think we're really falling down short is welcoming our visitors as well as new residents to this town. For some reason, our city is just not put out the welcome mat very well. And I wanna get in there and really work at that. I think some of our city employees actually need to take hospitality courses just to learn how to treat people that are coming here to spend money. And sometimes it's just rudeness that shows through. And it's because of the business I am, I hear from my clients and how this is done. So that's about what I got to say, but I've maybe only second to Roger Robertson here. I think I've applied for more non teen jobs in this town in the last <laughs> 20 years than anybody else. So. <laughs> I mean, right now, I think I'm on about 20 of them. So. <laughs> but uh, I really want to get involved with the city. I've been involved with almost every facet of the city for the last 20 years, and I want to continue to be that way. And that's about what I have to say. All right, Jim. Uh, if elected in uh, the city hire and when a city hires a new city manager, what should be the city manager's first priority? Well, I agree with, I forgot who said it earlier, is getting to know this community. Uh, myself, I have a few ideas. I mean, we're, I know I've contracted with some headhunters to go out and find people to bring here from far away and come here and tell us how to run Lincoln City, when I think we're to be looking within our own citizens here and see if we can't find someone that's capable of running this town, that has knowledge of this town. And I think there are a few people out there that do. What role should the City Council and City take in the development of the villages of Cascade Head? <coughs> to me, very little. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why we got the real estate business to begin with. I think uh, when we're talking about how bad our roads and are here in town, why we spent two and a half million dollars on that, I think would have been better on road projects. Would you promote that Lincoln City become involved again with the International Council for Local Environmental Initiatives? Why or why not? Why not? That one's tough, but I don't know all the issues on that, so I'll just pass until I know more. Okay, and your final summation, Jim, for your candidacy for city council. Nice and short. I'd love your vote. I'd love to get in there, and I think I can do some good. Thank you. Jim Davis. <laughs> Candidate for city council, Ward 2. Also running for Ward 2, city council, city of Lincoln City, is uh, D. Riley Hoagland. And uh, he uh, works at Goodwill as a supervisor. Mr. Hoogland. Hi, my name is Riley Hoogland, and uh, I am a supervisor at Goodwill. Um, running for city council for ward number two. I've lived here for seven years. Uh, my wife and I visited here two years prior to that, and we fell in love, as most of us have. As soon as we looked out the ocean and saw it, we knew that. Uh, we were leaving the Midwest to raise our family here. And we've been here ever since. I'm very proud to be from Lincoln City. I think Oregon has adopted me well and uh, has changed me to be a better person. Uh, in that, I have wanted to do more and be more. I was on the Visitors and Convention Committee for a year that didn't really work for our scheduling and what it was that they were doing. Um, so then I was part of the Budget Committee, which I really enjoyed and have been on that for four years. They elected me the vice chairman last year. I was able to see how our seasonal employees and temporary employees for the city work and made some changes to that. I was also able to bring $50,000 to Regatta Park that we voted on this last year so that we could improve the park. Oh, that's there. That's the end. Anyway, um, I think that that's important to have places for families to go and do if we want to have, if we want to promote families, let's have things for families to do. Maybe more than just the, the cook-offs and the kite festivals. Let's do more festivals for families. 
um, uh, that I just want to represent people with families and maybe the younger crowd that might not necessarily feel that they have a vote or people in city council that would represent them well. I would like to be that person. Okay, uh, Mr. Hoagland, uh, questions would be what role should the city council and the city take in the development of the villages villages of Cascade Head? I think having, having that as an asset, and I think the intention was to sell it uh, as, as pieces that has come up. I think it's an interim park right now. A lot of people don't know that it's an interim park right now. And having people use it as such and walk down there and, and be happy that there's sidewalks in the street and you can walk your dog and have that, um, using it for what it is right now and then maybe waiting to see. We don't need any immediate action on that. And what should be the first priority of the new city manager? I think maybe talk to David Hawker and see what he feels what his responsibility was for city manager. Um, obviously, this person's going to have the experience and the education that we want. Let's have him learn from David maybe what it is and what the quirkiness or the things that might be more specifically to Lincoln City than another area of what, if we're going to headhunt this person from another area, let's have him learn what it is about Lincoln City that makes Lincoln City as great as it is. And your final question, sir, uh, what is the number one issue facing Lincoln City? A lot of people are frustrated with the BRDs, obviously. Um, I'd say it's half and half between the BRDs and the, the problems of the BRDs. But I think that the lake quality is our number one property, or number one problem. I think that that should be our main concern of getting that. It used to be something great. It used to have swans and they used to have boat races and things like that. Let's bring that happiness back to the lake and not have it be something that we look away from. Let's have Devil's Lake be something that we, that's our gem, that's our something that we want to shine, and let's have that. And if that includes sewer, sewering the east side of the lake, let's do it and, and, and move on from that and, and build that lake back up. And finally, Mr. Oglin, your summation for your candidacy for City Council Board 2. I would like to say that I, I want to bring pride and someone who's very happy about Lincoln City to the council. A lot of people say that there's just a lot of people agreeing with anything that's brought to them at city council. I like to look into the details of what's going on. I was able to bring $50,000 out of the general fund to the park and not just fix the curbs. I want to do more for, uh, for the city. All right, Mr. Hoagland. Thank you. Thank you. Last but certainly not least is uh, the final candidate we'll hear from this afternoon. He is running not opposed for Ward 3. He is a Ward, Kip Ward. <laughs> Again, our thanks to Chinookwins Casino Resort, Confederated Tribes of Sluts Indians, NewsGuard, the radio stations, League of Women, League of Women Voters, Kiwanis, and the Chamber. Kip? Hi. Uh, my name's Kip Ward. Uh, I have the uh, historic anchor in and the eventuary. Uh, I'm the guy without any signs. <laughs> <laughs> Roger Sprague's running a close race behind me. I think he's got one. <laughs> uh, I, I don't have a speech, uh, so I guess... Uh, I'm just going to kind of take a little from everyone else's I've heard. Um, uh, so I'm car driving without a wheel, steering wheel. Uh, from uh, Kurt, uh, he was talking about uh, how important it is to work together. And uh, I was thinking about that as I was uh, sitting back there. And I was thinking about how really important it is that we work together. I was thinking, I, I, I came up with this idea, it's the zipper analogy is when you think of your zipper, uh, they're complete opposites. Uh, each side is the direct opposite of the other. And without the other, they're absolutely useless. But put them together, and when they work together, they, they save us some very embarrassing moments. <laughs> so uh, that's my zipper idea. And I'll license that to Kurt if you like to use that. It's my one and only time. Uh, 
Oh, and then uh, from uh, uh, Dick Anderson, uh, he uh, he mentioned uh, the ward system. And one of the things that I would love to do is get rid of this antiquated ward system that we all uh, have and have to live with. That way I can be your counselor from all your districts, just not from Ward 3. And uh, we probably do need the ward system for a county, but we sure do <coughs> need it um, here. And let's see, who else? Um, maybe Don, how long did you say you were married? 32 years. I've been married 32 years. It took me four wives. <laughs> <laughs> None of them were from Ethiopia. <laughs> so, uh, sorry. <laughs> Time's up. <again. laughs> my, my clock just went a little faster. <laughs> uh, what are, your, <laughs> what are your thoughts on charities to benefit our community? What programs do you hope to create to help benefit the struggling families of Lincoln County? I'm sorry, is that all one question? I guess. We're making two. Okay. Well, uh, charities, uh, we do the beach park and the, and the beach bike. Uh, that's a non-profit. We work with the Humane Society. And Lincoln City is unique that if you have an animal and you're a person without means and that animal needs medical care, you can take it either one of the vets, get treatment, and we'll, we'll pick up the check. And that's my, my most important charity. And what was the second part of that question? second part was, uh, what programs do you hope to create to help benefit the struggling families of Lincoln County? Gosh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm only a city councilor. Check your cancer. Moving on to something I do know that you've been involved in. What do you, would you support septic tank inspections for properties around Devil's Lake? And what about the installation of a sewer system? Well, sewer system's a no-brainer. And, uh, you know, it's not going to cure the problem. The sewer system isn't. And we got to remember that when we do do the sewer, we're gonna uh, we're gonna make it so uh, increased development of able around the lake, and so each house has a, has a footprint. And uh, unless we pass some some rules along with the sewer, uh, you're you're going to still have an increased problem from uh, leakage and drainage from all sorts of uses from that increased footprint. I don't know if that made as much sense as it did. Okay, and then septics. The, the, the question is, the, the problem is, is yeah, you want um, septic tank inspections, but you don't want to have, have to have somebody pay for a septic tank inspection and then have the sewer come right behind it, so they, they pay twice. So uh, it's kind of a yes and no, and, and if it's going to take forever to get this uh, sewer system in, then, uh, yeah, we need to get septic tank inspections right away. What should be the top priority of the new city manager after he or she is selected? Well, um, the, the top priority is going to be uh, to be able to get a, uh, a sense of the history of the town and uh, also of the current events. Uh, you know, things just don't happen magically. A lot of things had their roots 10 and 20 years ago, having been here for that long. You've seen things simmer and fester and, and until they come to the top. And that, from someone that's out of town, that can, that can catch them. Uh, catch them without them seeing that happening. And I, we've seen that time and time again. We've seen it at the chamber, and we've seen it at City Hall, and we've seen it at the um, uh, Cultural Center. Uh, so it's a real dangerous time, and uh, so hopefully we can we can help them come up to speed best we can. And finally, give your summation for your candidacy for City Council Ward 3. Well, one thing, you know, uh, I have a lot of ideas, my heads are in the clouds most of the time, but my feet are on the ground. And I like fixing things up and uh, making something that, that wasn't nice, nice. And um, I would really, I'll make this quick, I'd like to thank the, the city council. I mean, this last four years, they really took on the really tough jobs and popular jobs. It's kind of funny, I've, as a politician, and I don't think I'm a politician either, because right? you don't get paid. 
But uh, as a politician, you could say to them, you could say, well, I, I'm going to give you a new car, I'll give you a new house, I'll give you a vacation, I'll give you medical care, and, uh, and we're going to raise your water rates, and I'll give you a new car. And all you'll hear is that son of a bitch is going to raise our water rates. <laughs> so everyone, everyone likes them until they start actually doing something. They demand that they do something, and then we kind of tend to hate them for it. Uh, and this, this council took on the hard, hard decisions. Uh, we finally got the annexation uh, problems uh, worked out. We're working on the BRD things. They brought us a, a, a great water supply, water treatment program, those things that separate us from a third world country. And, you know, we're not guaranteed that we're going to agree with them. But we are should judge the council on how well they, they followed the process. And particularly this council had a really great process. And they've allowed people like me to come in afterwards because I wouldn't want to have the least bit involved. I'm from the water board. We get tortured all the time. <laughs> and to watch these guys get tortured too, believe me, I empathize. There's a reason they call it waterboarding. And <laughs> so, so anyway, it's because of them that, that I get to run and focus on things that are going to be positive and creative and a whole bunch of fun. And I'm so excited about doing that. And I promise you, on the responsibility, whose was that Dave's uh, deal about responsibility? I'll be responsible. I'll come to your meetings and I'll do my job. I never miss one time at the water board, and I won't miss it for you here. Dear board. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the end of 2014. Again, our thanks to the News Guard uh, here at Lincoln City for uh, providing the live streaming to the radio stations of YBC, KBCH, KMPD, KWDP. Shiloh Gwen's Casino Resort, Heather Hatton has done a marvelous job uh, orchestrating this whole event. Confederated Tribes of Celeste Indians, Lincoln City Chamber, Kiwanis, and you ladies and gentlemen for attending. Remember to vote. Thank you. Good afternoon. I apologize.